Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. It's me, John Park. It's time for another episode of John Park's Workshop? No. It's time for another episode of JP's Product Pick of the Week. It's Tuesday. Uh, sorry, as you can probably hear from my voice, <clears throat> I had a little cold. Uh, I'm a little loopy from that still, apparently. Um, I'm going to have a nice sip of water here. Hold on one second. Off to a roaring start. Um, tackle the world. I would love to reenact the Matrix playing all of the parts. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, so, here we go. Before I go any further today with the product pick, first of all, I want to let you know that you can head to the product page by using that QR code or that URL right there, and that will get you a huge, huge whopping discount on this week's product pick. I believe it's 50% off this week. Uh, I'm going to go verify that myself. Uh, it sure is. And thanks uh, to Jelly uh, for catching that. We almost had uh, the wrong product in there, fault of my own. We have two very similar products, uh, but this is the newer one of the two. So thanks, Jelly. Uh, <clears throat> so head on over there. You can throw it in your cart. There's no need for a coupon code. Maximum of 10 per customer. And uh, But before I talk about it, I'm going to have Lady Ada introduce this product. So uh, take it away, Lady Ada. The TCA 8418 breakout board, which I'm really excited about because we started this design in 2020 um, and the chip was completely unavailable and then it became available. Um, so we are able to uh, finally stock this really interesting uh, GPIO expander and uh, keypad matrix driver. So it is an 18 GPIO expander if you want to just have like 18 inputs, outputs, with pull-ups, you know, and, and interrupt output, then you can do that. But what's interesting about this chip is it also does keypad scanning. So it has 10 columns, eight rows, so it can do up to 180 keys. And here I'm just demoing it with a simple uh, three by four matrix keypad. And it has a 10 um, element event queue. So it can actually, like you don't have to pull it constantly. If there's key presses, it'll record the key matrix presses and releases for you and then you know, whenever you get around to asking over I squared C, hey, what key presses did you get? Um, it'll it'll emit those key key codes and whether they were pressed or released. And then you can um, use it with Arduino or CircuitPython. We have drivers for uh, both. So you can use it with any microcontroller. Um, and then another interesting thing about this chip is it also has a Linux kernel support. And so if you happen to be interested in like making a up to 80 key a keyboard for a single board computer. Um, this driver chip, you can load it with uh, into the kernel using a device tree overlay. You can set up the key map, and um, then you can use it as a native keyboard um, built into the kernel, which I think is kind of cool. I'm gonna cool. try that out. Um, so yeah, so here are the columns. So there's uh, columns zero through nine, and then the rows are down here. Uh, there's two up here, row zero one, and then uh, through R seven. Uh, note that you cannot change the row and column assignment. Like you can't make a column into a row. Like there's 10 columns, eight rows, that's it. And then, uh, you know, I just happened to have a keypad. I thought it would be easy to wire this up. I just wrote a little example that maps the uh, key numbers to um, digits and displays them. And uh, there's also a debouncer built in. And of course you can mix and match. You can have some GPIO and uh, some keypad matrices. Um, just again, you know, rows and columns are, are fixed. You can't change whether a pin is a row or a column. Whatever it's labeled as is what it is. But it's a, a really nice little chip and um, does something that I haven't seen a lot of other, uh, you know, no GPIO expander that I know of other than like the um, HT16K33 does keypads. And even that doesn't um, have a nice event queue like this one does. Yes, indeed. So here it is inside of my little mysterious box. Here we find that's the product pick of the week this week. It is the TCA8418 keypad matrix driver and GPIO expander. This runs over I squared C. So we have two super convenient Stemma QT ports on it. Also has a couple little mounting holes on there. And then it has pins for the columns, rows, and a couple of extras there for using header pins for your I squared C instead. Um, so you saw in the example there, Lady Ada had that 
plugged into a membrane keyboard, this will work for pretty much anything. You could make 18 GPIO pins to be LEDs or buttons or switches. You could make a huge arcade uh, button array if you want to using the matrix scanning. That's what gives you that 10 by 8, which means you could have up to 80 keys. Uh, and it also works really well for, of course, mechanical keyboard key switches. Uh, let me go ahead and jump to the overhead and I'll show you. Uh, here's an example of using it with one of our little telephone style. This is the 4x4 telephone style keypad, so it doesn't have to be a matrix, uh, or rather, it doesn't have to be a membrane. It can be actual buttons, actual little clicky buttons on here. Uh, this normally just has header pins coming out the bottom. I decided to solder the board since the size works out uh, pretty well. Not perfect, but pretty well uh, to solder. If I flip this upside down here, uh, solder the four columns and two of the row pins, and then the extra two I have running since they're on the other side of the board using wires there. But that gives you this sort of neat little uh, modular keyboard that you can use, little keypad that you can use for different projects. I have it plugged in over I squared C into a perfect recipient for this, I think. Uh, and this was Todd Bott's suggestion, so thank you. This is a perfect recipient for it. This is our Trinky. If you have a need for a Trinky, something incredibly small, a little microcontroller that can be plugged right into your USB port on your computer, uh, this will work really well for it. So have the Stemma QT, I squared C. This is acting as these 16 buttons, could be up to 80 uh, using the columns and rows. And what I'll do is put one of our little handy dandy adapters on there and plug that into a USB hub so we can Imagine that's the side of your laptop or some other computer that you want to plug into. Now I have immediate access to this cute little keypad. Uh, I'm going to give you a little demo of that by jumping over to, uh, let's see, well this one, yeah, that'll pretty much work. Let me pull the thing off of my face there. Whoops. Okay, I think I have extra. <laughs> I have an extra keypad on my face today. Let me move this one down here. There we go. Uh, so here you can see I'm in Atom where I've coded it. And we'll take a look at the code in a second. Uh, what I'll do is connect to it. I'm going to use Disco Tool uh, to the Trinky. Uh, and now you can see if I go ahead and type on the keyboard here, uh, I'm seeing key events show up depending on which keys I press and release, I get different key events. That's what the chip is uh, recording. And then we can use our code to turn that into actual uh, USB key presses. So here I'm just gonna put in a comment there and then you can see I can get one, two, three, A, four, five, six, B, seven, eight, nine, C, star zero, pound, D. Sorry, I typed very messily there so it looks like the thing doesn't work, right? Let me do that again. Four, five, six, B, seven, eight, nine, C, star, zero, pound, D. Uh, so that works really well as a USB uh, input device. You could, of course, also use that for things like MIDI. You could use that not as USB, but just input to the microcontroller itself. Forget about USB, you could use it to type in codes to do different things on small displays, on LCDs, change the color of a NeoPixel pattern, use it to open up a lock using uh, a servo motor or something like that for an escape room or a solenoid. So these are really, really handy. Um, Another thing you'll notice is that, I'll go ahead and unplug this one. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's, let's take a look at the code for this. I'll leave that, leave that sitting right there. Um, <clears throat> so all I need to do, the key thing here, is import this library. We have a really nice, neat library, both for CircuitPython and for Arduino. It's the TCA8418 library. I'm importing that. Then I set this up over I squared C. So you can see here I have an I squared C bus that's running on the I squared C uh, stemma port. You can also use the second port if it's an RP2040. And then I set up the uh, TCA object there over I squared C. Here's where we set up which are being used, the columns and rows. So I have four of the columns, in this case four of the rows, and this will vary depending on your project up to eight, uh, sorry, up to ten columns and eight rows. And then I'm setting all of those pins uh, as keypad mode. So remember, we can use this to fire off LEDs and uh, read non 
matrix key switches. That's also possible. But in this case, I'm setting them all up in keypad mode, uh, enabling interrupt, and enabling this little queue where it remembers uh, up to 10 key presses on the chip itself and then sends them over I squared C the moment I squared C looks for them. Now, in reality, all this happens in about a millisecond, so we don't notice any delay with it, but it can handle up to 10 really, really, really fast key presses and not lose track. Those are gonna get sent to over I squared C. Uh, then in my main code, I'm just using this uh, TCA key int, so we check for a key interrupt, and then we grab all of the um, key presses that are in the queue using this events count. So we get a count of them, however many there are. And then we ask, okay, what's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth event in that count? Uh, we parse that out to be our presses or releases and which key it is of the, in this case, 16 that we could be pressing. And then in the end, in this case, I'm sending out a USB, uh, but you could do other things with it. So I'll show you not only, and some of you have seen this before, but let me, let me switch to another view. Uh, and you'll see not only can we do little keypads, uh, membrane key switches, but here's one where I have uh, six by five. I'll zoom out here. Uh, just to give you, still, this isn't the full blown eight by 10. 80 keys is a lot of keys. Uh, I'm using two of these in this project so that I can do split macro keyboard that aren't touching each other with a minimum of wires in there, and that's using two I squared C buses. Uh, but here's a case where you can see really clearly column pins and row pins all heading to my TC8418 column and row uh, headers that I've soldered onto there. And let's see, before I go any further, let's hop back over to the site. Take that one over there. So you can see today, this is an incredible price. If you head over there, you're gonna get this for half price, $2.98 per, uh, up to 10 of them. So if you ever wanna do uh, GPIO expansion type of projects, get a lot of LEDs or uh, a lot of buttons, a lot of switches or any kind of keypad projects, it's a really good one for that. Um, so throw those in your cart, there's no coupon code needed. If we take a look at the uh, associated learn guide here, Oh my gosh, what happened? I think I just, huh. I tried to explode my, what did I do? Where did I move it to? I tried to explode my uh, broadcast software. It doesn't want to show you the learn guide now. Let's see if I can uh, make it go there. It's from the product page. Yeah, that'll work. I dragged something and it totally disappeared. Uh, so thankfully in our product page, we always do have a link uh, to the learn guide. Here it is, primary guide. <clears throat> uh, so there you can see, uh, same little demo there from the video. Uh, talks about the specs on here, gives you the pinouts. Uh, and I've mentioned this, I think, before, but this has only one I squared C address. So unfortunately, the chip was not set up to be used uh, in uh, multiples, so the only way to use multiples of them is if you have multiple I squared C ports on your microcontroller, which you definitely can do uh, on RP2040 based. Feather, Pico, uh, Cutie Pie, that little Trinky, and on and on. Uh, at least that, I think that Trinky is one. Uh, then, let's see, we have uh, the download section here in the guide it has the data sheet, so if you want to go check that out, you can see this is a Texas Instrument TC8418, and it tells you TC8418 is a keypad scan device uh, with integrated ESD protection, operate up uh, 1.65 to 3.6 volts, and has 18 general purpose I.O. that can be used to support 80 keys via I2C. Uh, so you can get some extra details from that there uh, if you're interested. If we head over to the chat, I saw we had some questions about, um, probably about the rollover. Uh, Tyth says you can test holding down eight keys at once and then repress one while holding the rest. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, let me plug this back in. I haven't tested this. Uh, I do have a funny flaw in my code where I'm using shift modifier to create the star or at least the pound, pound sign. Uh, and if I keep that held, it acts like a shift on all of them. So I won't use that one. But if we uh, jump back over to my Atom session here, 
so you can see both actually in the output and uh, in my made main code, code view here. Uh, I'm going to press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not sure if that's demonstrating. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know what's doing there. My code probably isn't, uh, isn't helping us any. I'm getting resends there. Uh, does that happen with just like one, two, three? No. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think we might be getting ghosting. So it's possible, uh, depending on how you have your matrix set up with a diode matrix, to get ghost, uh, ghost presses. And there are recommendations in the uh, data sheet on how to avoid that. Essentially, if you have to press three keys at once, they say put them in different columns, I think it is, uh, or different columns and rows, so a diagonal. They call it the Control-Alt-Delete mode, so you can set, set it up for uh, priority on three presses as well uh, that won't ghost. Uh, C. Grover says you can use the I squared C mux to cascade a few of these. That's right, it's another way to do it, is uh, multiplex the multiplexers, which is definite matrix territory there. Uh, all right, let's see if there are no other questions. I'll remind you to head over to that URL right there, that QR code. It'll take you to the product page. You can pick these up for this great, great price today. Uh, and I'll wrap things up here. So that right there is my product pick of the week. It is the TCA 8418 keypad matrix and GPIO breakout. That is going to do it for today's episode of JP's Product Pick of the Week. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.